Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will talk about the process of login or also commonly known as the process of authentication, which really means ensuring that the user is who they say they are. Backendless supports different login options. Uh, there are four and uh, specifically they are basic login, which is with username and password. There is a social login, also known as OAuth2 login. There is a guest login option. And finally, there is a login with a phone number. Every single uh, login process that we support is reviewed in a separate video. And in this one, we will talk about the process in general and what it really means from the client server communication and how uh, the actual login works. So as far as the login, uh, let's review the, the basic login. And uh, here, the process starts with your application, whether it is a UI builder application, or a native app, an application created with uh, any no code, low code UI development tool that exists uh, in the industry. You collect information from the user that would include their identity and their password. And uh, the information that you gather from the user, which would be a login form, is sent to the server where the server identifies that user using the identity record and then verifies the password. If the information matches, then Backendless sends back a Backendless user object. And that Backendless user object, if you use uh, any of our SDKs, is presented to you as an object. If you use UI Builder, you still get that object that has all the properties. And if you use our REST API, you basically get a JSON document that contains information about the user. So it is very, very simple. It is important to understand that whenever you get the response from login from Backendless, one of the properties that is returned to you, to your client application, is called user token. And user token is a, a special value. It is going to be a string value that just uh, random and uh, unpredictable. You cannot really calculate a token that is assigned by the server. And that user token really represents user's session with the server. What happens after you log in is that user token should travel with every single request from the client application to the server to identify that user session. And once the token expires, that means that the session has expired, or really it happens backwards. Once the session expires, the token is invalidated. If you use any of our SDKs, uh, or if you build applications with UI Builder, handling of all of the, uh, of sending user token back and forth is done completely automatically. If you're building an application using our REST API, or you use any external UI development tool, it would become your responsibility to make sure that the token is sent to the server with every subsequent request to identify that user, to identify the session. Why is it important to identify the session and the user? Well, for the reason that if you don't send this token, the request really becomes an anonymous request. The server doesn't know who that request, what user that request represents. If the token is there, then we know what user is uh, sending that request and any security policies associated with that user account are enforced by the server. And as far as the security policies, we will be talking about it later in this course. Any user may have security roles and then the security roles really translate to the security policy. So sending that token back with every subsequent request once the user is logged in is going to be very, very important. So in here, the most important thing to understand is once you process an API request, meaning taking identity, taking the password, sending to the server with the login API, once you get that backendless user back, there's going to be a token in there. Once again, with all our SDKs and with UI Builder, this is something you should not worry about. But if you start integrating uh, backendless from an external tool or using the REST API, it is very important that there is a special processing for the user token. With all other mechanisms uh, to log in, such as social login or logging in with a phone number, the concept is going to be a little bit 
more complex and involved because let's say with social logins or OAuth, there's going to be a, an external server that is included in the, uh, the, the overall authentication process. And then we review how that flow works in the video dedicated to social logins. But for now, uh, I thought that it would be important to actually talk about that flow and understand what's going on there before we start talking about actual APIs. So the, the groundwork has been laid and now let's move on to learning about the actual login API, which will be in the next video. Thank you for watching guys. And as always, happy coding with Backendless.